video, we'll cover the foundations of reverse engineering Android APKs using the tools we installed in the previous tutorial. There are a number of different resources for finding malware samples online, and I'll give a quick outline for finding those sources and downloading APKs directly from the Google Play Store in another video. But for now, we'll just use this sketchy Skype app that lives in a popular Android malware samples repo on GitHub. You'll notice if you try to directly download the APK file that your browser gets upset and warns that you're downloading malware. So we'll get around that by just right-clicking on the download button and instead using wget to download the malware through the command line. If we look at the APK file, we'll see it's actually a jar file. So it's essentially just a compressed directory. If we unzip it, we can see all the files that existed in the application before it was packaged. Uh, but the problem is that those files that we can see haven't actually been decompiled, so they'll look like garbage text that we can't really do much with when we actually try to read them. APK tool to decompile the APK in order to view all of the assets and resources. To use the tool, just pass the D flag for decompile in the APK file and you'll get a directory with all of the decompiled files. The manifest file is a great place to start when trying to analyze what an Android application is doing. It will list all the permissions the application intends to request as well as different things like intent filters and intents and services that are going to be used. Now you'll see there's a directory called Smalley, and Smalley is actually an assembly style language that is what the classes.dex file is converted to when you use APK tool. As we'll see, it's not super easily readable unless you really love assembly, and uh, so we'll be converting that to a more Java style language in a little bit. Now that the APK has been decompiled, we can also go into the resources folder and take a look at things like all of the strings that will be used in the application. And that's a really great way to also try to understand what an application is trying to do or to possibly find any kind of sketchy language that might be used and, uh, and hint that what you're looking at is actually malware. In order to access the source code, we're going to go back into that original unzipped directory and convert the classes.dex file into the jar file that will allow us to read it with JDGUI. We're going to use dex2jar for this. And it's as easy as just running that shell script file with the dex file. And there we have the classes-dex2jar jar file. We're going to open JDGUI and then just import that jar file. Now you can see that we have a whole bunch of kind of weird obfuscated classes that have been disassembled from that jar file that we created from the classes.dex file. If we look through these, we can see that there are a number of different random service classes that have been created and um, download notifications and some indications that maybe this isn't exactly the Skype app. We can see that they're importing the telephony manager and uh, that that actually allows you to manage how the phone is being used and to do things like sending SMS messages and, and some kind of sketchy stuff that malware tends to like to try and do with your phone. So we can see it being accessed there, getting the system service for phone. Um, we can see that there's some sort of like weird flag that's being returned that almost looks like it could be passed to an API somewhere. Uh, so that's kind of an indication that things might not exactly be as they initially seemed from the name of the APK. We've got it assets like a, a root shell script and downloaded data and some very strange URLs. And uh, we'll kind of get an idea of what's going on with that a little bit when we dive deeper into the assets for the application. In this class, we can see reference to chmod to change permissions, uh, presumably for a file or perhaps to enable additional applications to be downloaded. We see reference to a shell script that's trying to run, as well as some strange URL that has nothing to do with Skype, and then even more permissions that are trying to be set. Now we're going to go back and look at what's happening with the assets directory of the application. Here we can see a whole bunch of random obfuscated file names 
Um, if we look at file A, we see that it's actually a jar file as well, which makes us think that maybe there might be something interesting living in there. Um, there are some binaries, a lot more binaries, a data file. So we're gonna focus on the jar file first, just because that might be the easiest thing to work with. And we're gonna use APK tool again to see if we can decompile it and, uh, and see what might be in there. Now we can see that the a jar file was decompiled into this a.out directory. And if we go in there, sure enough, this is actually another application. And this time the Android manifest has a ton of permissions compared to the initial application we looked at. There are activities everywhere. There's a whole bunch of intents and intent filters and services being called. This is much more interesting than what we initially looked at. So it seems like maybe the original application was just sort of this dummy application to, uh, to fool either users or um, malware checkers, <laughs> virus, antivirus software into believing it was actually a totally benign application. Here we can see that the permissions that are being requested are extensive. So we've got installing packages, reading logs, reading the phone state, reading external storage, writing to external storage, uh, preventing the phone from sleeping, a whole bunch of scary stuff that really indicates that there might be something malicious going on here. If we look at the assets directory for this inner application, we can actually see a bunch of very strange assets like images and mp3 files. Looking at the strings file now, we actually see that there is a lot going on in this application. We see uh, translated content, different titles for SD cards, references to external storage, installation notifications, message overlays. There's a whole lot happening there. Now because this is an application, we know that there's a classes.dex file as well that we can analyze with JDGUI. We just have to unzip that a.jar file, convert the classes.dex file to a jar file using dex to jar again, and then we can just open it directly in JDGUI. Now the purpose of this video was to really do a brief introduction into reverse engineering Android APKs. So we're not going to do a deep dive into what exactly is happening with this malware sample, but you can see that packaged within the original application, there are a number of other Android packages. Now we saw in the initial analysis of the classes.dex file that was in the outer application, the quote unquote Skype application, that they seem to be trying to install other applications. So from here you could continue to use JDGUI to step through all of these different classes in this really readable Java style formatted source code and see how they interact with the other classes that we viewed previously. But for now, this is all you need to get started with reverse engineering Android applications on your own. In a subsequent video, we'll look at how to actually get APKs from the Google Play Store off your device, as well as finding other places for malware samples.